One of the most manageable of the Oaxacan dried chili moles is called coloradito. And it's manageable because it's really just made from one chili, and that's the ancho. And it's got all the seeds and nuts, the beautiful sweet spices, and a nice touch of chocolate. To make it, you start by cleaning the ancho chilies, pulling out the stems, letting all the seeds fall out. And then you want to dry toast them. I've heated a skillet to medium heat. And then I'm going to press the torn open chilies down flat on that hot surface until they're aromatic and they lighten a little bit in color. Collect all of those toasted chilies in a bowl, cover them with hot tap water, slide a plate on top so that they stay submerged and let them soak for about 30 minutes or so. While the chilies are soaking, roast some tomatoes on a rimmed baking sheet just up underneath the broiler. After about five minutes aside, they'll be black and blistered and soft. Let those cool off. Break apart a head of garlic, leaving the cloves in their little papery husks, and slice up a large white onion. Lay those on a sheet of foil in a hot skillet and let those toast until the onions are completely soft. They're gonna blacken in spots, and the garlic is soft as well. With the skillet on the heat, measure in a little vegetable oil, add the sesame seeds to it, and stir it all around for a couple of minutes until those sesame seeds are very aromatic and starting to brown. Then scrape the sesame seeds into a bowl, add the drained chilies, but save the soaking liquid. Add some Mexican oregano, then take some cloves, black pepper, and cinnamon, grind them up, and add that spice mixture to the bowl. Then toss in some raisins and almonds. This is mole making. And then I'm going to put it into the blender jar. I'm gonna add just enough of the chili soaking liquid to cover the chilies. Cover the blender. I want just enough liquid in the blender jar to keep all of the solids moving through the blades. The mixture is very smooth. On to the straining. And I'll need a medium mesh strainer. I'm gonna pour this in. What we're trying to do here is to catch any stray seeds or bits of skin that didn't get completely blended. Now to the same blender jar, I'm gonna add the peeled roasted garlic and the roasted onions. I've got the roasted tomatoes here that cool down enough now that I can peel off their skins. That's the nice thing about roasting them this way is that the skins just come right off and their flavor will be much sweeter and a little bit smoky. So those go in there. Put the top on the blender and turn it on. So we have two different mixtures. We have this tomato and onion garlic mixture, and we have the chili and everything else mixture. The tomato mixture gets cooked down separately in a pan I've got over medium heat here, filmed with a little bit of oil, and then I'm just gonna pour that in and stir that until it's reduced and thick and like the consistency of tomato paste. While this tomato mixture is cooking down, I'm gonna also cook down the chili puree. I've got a Dutch oven here over a medium, medium high heat. Also film the bottom of that with a little bit of oil. And I'm gonna scrape in the chili mixture. You wanna make sure that it'll sizzle nicely when you put it in there. This'll take about 20 minutes or so for this to cook down to a kind of paste consistency as well. When the tomato puree got thick, I turned that one off. Took a lot longer for the chili puree, but it's thick enough now that you can stir through it and see the bottom of the pot. That's what I'm looking for. I've used a little spatter screen on top of it just to keep the spatters to a minimum. Always one of the 
one of the struggles with mole making. And now it's time to combine these two cook down mixtures. And then we've got three last ingredients to go in. I'm going to add some chicken broth to it, four cups. You can buy a good quality one at the grocery store and use that or make your own. I've got some breadcrumbs, which might surprise you, but it's a, a common thickener that is added to Oaxacan moles. About three tablespoons of those breadcrumbs. And then the last touch is the Mexican chocolate. Really a defining flavor in this mole coloradito from Oaxaca. After a rough chop on that, slide it into the mole coloradito. After about 45 minutes of simmering, all those flavors will have come together. We'll need to season it with a little salt, and you might want to add a pinch of sugar to it just to balance all the flavors. And you're gonna have an amazing pot of mole. Now, it's a big pot of mole, so you might want to freeze leftovers. It'll freeze beautifully when you defrost it. Put it in the blender again to bring it all back together and it'll be just delicious. This mole is wonderful with some grilled chicken or some sauteed shrimp, but it's very classic as the sauce for some chicken enchiladas.